Hi, this is uh, Dr. H coming to you from San Francisco again um, for the second time today on Wednesday afternoon at around 4.30 or so Pacific time. I wanted to um, address everyone on some of the key questions that are coming forward. I think the most important one that we're hearing about in the Bay Area, the San Francisco Bay Area is how long will this epidemic last and how long will lockdowns last and, and so on. So I wanted to take a few minutes to address my own interpretation of all the data because the answer is largely data driven, uh, but the fact is that no one can predict at this exact time how long it will last, but there are certain parameters that I wanted to review. One assumption that I'm going to make is that everyone in the nation will be practicing social distancing equally um, at this particular time in order to make any assumptions valid. Um, we have extremes going on in the United States where half the states have no deaths reported uh, and roughly 90% of all the deaths that are being reported come from the top 10 states. So we have immediately, it's sort of rational to suggest that we have regional differences. The majority of the states come from the East Coast at this particular moment in time, one from the South in Louisiana and then California and Washington from the West Coast, but there are certainly regional differences and there, with even within regions within New York State New York City, as I've mentioned before, is driving the majority of our concern for the new ground zero globally. So if you're in, living in one of these states with essentially no new cases at this particular moment in time and we see the same results a week from now, you're probably going to be fortunate enough to have dealt with this uh, pandemic very effectively. Um, there are issues regarding density uh, of people living in your state or in your city or in your community that will drive this. So for example in San Francisco right now we've been flat in terms of new cases and new mortality roughly for the last seven days or so but we have much less of a population, much uh, smaller population as compared to Los Angeles, for example. So when the density increases, the risk increases. Um, the other issue is the virus itself. We may, we may be seeing a different viral mutant and mutations in the West Coast versus the East Coast. We just, we just don't know enough. So if you're in one of the top 10 states, um, then Perhaps this will take four to six weeks to peak versus three weeks from now to peak in other locations which have very low density of cases. And then if you're in the highest density cases in New York and New Jersey, it may take six to 12 weeks uh, because we're only beginning to see the doubling effect every two days uh, in these particular locations. So again, how long will this take and then what are the parameters. So this, this is an experiment. Um, no one has the, 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 uh, the exact predictions. But at this point in time, looking at it globally, there is no clear signal of a second wave. So that means in Korea, Japan, China, Singapore, Hong Kong, we haven't seen a uh, resumption of the same density of cases as life returns to more normal, although schools have not reopened in any of these locations, and this suggests to us here in the United States that schools will not likely reopen this season. Now, in Seoul, Korea, there are additional cases happening as people go back to their normal day, their normal walks of life, and we'll just have to watch whether this ultimately emerges into a second wave, but at this point there's no clear signal for that. What we do know is that businesses will, will push to get back on track for the effects on the negative impact on, the globe, on, the, on our economy, and that's 
a rational thing, that we need to be extremely vigilant about the high-risk population, so the elderly, the immunocompromised, and so on, because ultimately the asymptomatic carriers in our younger populations can still infect them and we can see second waves because of that. So no matter who you, you listen to, whether it's the dire predictions of two million deaths across the United States or hundreds of thousands of deaths in the United States, which I at this time don't see a clear, clear information that would suggest that this is a likely event, uh, we have to theoretically deal with, with these types of high-risk populations. So, why, why do I think that, that it's very unlikely for us to hit the, the worst-case scenarios? Well, first of all, we have now access to more therapeutic options. So there is the hydro, hydroxychloroquine plus the zithromax, a, a zithromycin combination that was tested um, at least in small numbers in China and in Italy. And now we have access, the government has provided us access to many thousands of doses in New York. And this is an antiviral strategy. So once we get more data on this, this will may be able to preclude a lot of cases from going from mildly symptomatic or moderately symptomatic to require hospitalization and critical care. We also have at least two an antivirals that have come up in the data, one from Japan for a drug that's known to affect the Middle Eastern respiratory virus or MERS, M-E-R-S, and now a, a stage, a phase three um, drug by Gilead that may be fast-tracked because of its potential therapy, therapeutic index in, in COVID-19. So we're just beginning to have these options available to us then, and these options were not available in Europe and China on a large scale. And that's the antiviral effect. You also have the whole panoply of things that we can modulate the immune system back downward the immediate things are on the, for the severe cases would be more information with regards to immune modulators that are available today in the United States uh, for autoimmune disorders. These are uh, cytokine blockers, whether they're IL-1 receptor antagonists or IL-6 antagonists, which again are, are these promotive of, inf of inflammation that gets toned down by these pharmaceutical or biological agents, and we'll get more information on this in a fairly rapid fashion. And then lastly, I think there is encouraging small amount of data on the use of stem cells and exosomes in, in our population that's quite ill, uh, both from China as well as individual case reports now from the East Coast. So I don't think that um, that we'll ever get to the to the worst case scenarios, and I also think that our entrepreneurial spirit here in the states will allow us to 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 be more flexible and to be rational and data driven, but also to be innovative and um, and get this um, epidemic under control, even in the even in our hardest hit areas. Again, thank you for your time, and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Bye bye.